Hello everyone here on the free CodeCamp channel wanting to learn how to make your own CRM with Google Sheets or PostgreSQL. I say or as I will be showing you how to build a CRM with both. So if you are more comfortable with Google Sheets, we will start off with that. Or if you want to use a database, I will be showing you how to make it in PostgreSQL too. My name is Anu Kuba and I'm a software developer and course creator on YouTube. I am also your host for this action-packed video for all skill levels. It is my personal mission to show you that anyone can make a CRM or customer relationship management system and make it customizable to them and their business. A CRM is essentially a way to manage your customer data. For example, imagine having thousands and thousands of customers. It would become virtually impossible to remember which one of your customers bought what, when, or when the last time that you emailed them was. CRMs allow you to add this data to the system, filter through it to find customers based on a variety of variables, and even automate your processes such as sending thank you emails or payment reminders. The main purpose of CRMs has traditionally been improving customer service and driving sales. CRM softwares actually have been around since the late 1990s, but have really flourished in the recent years. Some examples of famous CRMs are Salesforce, Oracle NetSuite for larger enterprises, and HubSpot and Freshwork for smaller businesses. Now, there are many reasons why you might want to build your own CRM. For me, the most obvious is that CRMs can be expensive, and often you are paying for features that you don't really care about that much. Using low-code solutions such as the one we will be using in this course allows you to create your own personalized CRM experience totally for free or at least at a fraction of the traditional price. This CRM will allow you to store your data in a visual way, meaning we will be creating dynamic graphs and charts as well as allows you to add or edit data from the platform itself. It will also allow you to perform refunds directly from the platform using the Stripe API, as well as send out automated emails based on templates of your choice. API stands for Application Programming Interface. They allow for technologies to essentially talk with each other and are essential to so many services that we rely on today. They are in fact behind most apps we use on a day-to-day -day basis, and they can shape the information passed between one technology to another. APIs are everywhere. We are in fact going to be using the Stripe API and a mailing API in this course, but there are so many you can choose from to improve your CRM offering. This course is going to adopt what is considered a low-code approach to creating platforms. This means there are no hard coding prerequisites for doing this course, although unlike no-code, an understanding in the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are advised if you want to take your project to the next level in terms of styling and functionality. To break it down for you, here is what we are going to learn step by step. In part one, we will build out our CRM from Google Sheets in which we will fetch all of our data into the platform, but then also learn how to add new data to the existing Google Sheet directly from the platform we have built. We will also learn how to edit data too, so that it is saved back in the Google Sheet afterwards. Next, in part two, we will integrate Stripe for processing refunds, thanks to the pre-configured Stripe API. After that, in part three, we will learn how to send out automated email notifications with the mailing API. And finally, in part four, we will upgrade and transition the backend away from Google Sheets and to Postgres SQL for scalability and to handle more complex features. Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's get to building out our CRM. Okay, so welcome to the Retool platform. This is the platform that we will be using for this tutorial in order to create a dashboard that looks like this. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm gonna start off by creating a new project on the main dashboard. Here are some previous projects that I have done. We're gonna go ahead and just click here to create a blank app. And let's go ahead and give this a name. So I'm gonna call this FCC. CRM and just click create app, which will take me to this blank dashboard. Okay, so here we go. Here is our blank dashboard with a table that has been created for us just as a demonstration. I'm going to simply go ahead and delete that table to truly make this a blank slate. Now, 
we are going to be working with some data. Now, in any sort of situation, say you're a small business owner and you have a lot of data that you then want to use to create an app, that's the angle that we're going to go with. Okay, so we are going to take this sample data from Northwind right here. This sample data will provide us with a table of categories, regions for our customers, territories, customer demographics, customer demographics again, a table of employees to show which employee dealed with which customer and order, employee by territory, supplier, product, shipper, the sales order itself, the order details, and so on. And then we're going to insert all that data. So this is the data that we are going to work with for the first part of this tutorial. I have gone ahead and put all of this data in a Google spreadsheet for you. As you will see here, here are all our customer. There is a lot of data. We also have the sales orders and so on and so on. If you would like to make your own table, all you have to do is go to your Google Drive or sign up if you don't have an account, create a spreadsheet here by clicking on Google Sheets and start creating columns and rows. You can even label the tabs down here as previously seen and create new tabs with new tables. So that is just some background for you on Google Sheets and how to create your own. But for now and for this tutorial, if you want to follow along, please go ahead and just use the table with the Northwind data I pre-made. This data mimics a generic company that receives orders. These orders are represented by rows here in this table, which we have put in a tab called sales orders. Data in the sales order table can also link to specific products that can be cross-linked to here. Employees that deal with the orders, the customers that make the order, and so on and so on can also be linked. I would advise taking a moment here to really understand what is going on in this database. So I will be sharing this link with you in the description below. Please go ahead and have a look at that. Once again, here are all our orders. There are up to 831 orders that we are going to be working with. So great, a lot of data. Let's carry on. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new resource. So let's go ahead and go to our resource page. Here you can see all the resources available to us. I'm going to go ahead and select the Google Sheet one on this occasion, as we want to be able to connect the Google Sheet we are looking at to the platform. So these are the steps you will need to do in order to make that happen. Great. So now let's go back to our app and don't forget to refresh the page. Now I'm going to make a new query and as the resource, I'm going to choose the new resource we just made, which is called Northwind CRM data. So there we go, we have officially linked up our Google Sheet to this platform. So now let's go back to the app we are building. We are just going to use a component, the table component to be precise, from the UI panel on the right in order to map all our data onto it. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. If it helps, I like to think of this platform as having a bottom panel that is to make queries, a panel on the right that is for all our UI components, and a panel on the left, which is for seeing the shape of our data that comes back to us after we make a query. I will be showing you this later on. Okay, so now we can actually pick a spreadsheet ID and I'm just gonna select Northwind Data as that is what we called our Google Sheet here. And for the sheet name, well, the first thing that I wanna get is all the sales orders. So let's go ahead and select that here, sales orders, just typing that in, making sure that it's spelt exactly the same way that we did right here, sales order, sales order. Great, and just click save and run. So now we should see all our data coming up down here. Wonderful, I'm just gonna rename this to get sales order data so that it's more readable for us later on. Wonderful, so we are now getting all our sales order data and to create a table with it, well, all I'm gonna do is just drag a table in here and there we go. We will see our table populate with all the sales order data. This is because we are on this query, our query here is selected so it knows to use this query in order to populate our table. 
While we're here, I'm just going to get rid of this query as we are not using it at the moment. Wonderful. So there is our table. It is looking good. Let's carry on. Before we move on, I'm actually just going to edit this table a little bit so that it looks a little bit neater for us. So let's do that now. So I can simply click on the columns here and rename the column if I want. So for example, maybe let's call this order ID like so. And that will update in here. Let's also get the customer ID. So I'm just going to go customer ID just like so and so on. So while we are here, I'm also going to show you that you can format each of the columns. So for example, the required date, well, if I click on this, I can even choose date time, local time zone, or original time zone. It is completely up to you, whichever one you'd wish. Let's go with original time zone, like so. And that will format the date to be a little bit more readable for us, as opposed to this format right here. Let's do the same on the shipped date. So once again, let's go ship date and just select column type, original time zone, and you will see that changing. And finally, on the order date, I'm just going to click here, column type, date time, original time zone. Wonderful. So this is already looking a bit better. While I am here, let's have a look at what else we can do. We can, of course, also hide columns. So for example, perhaps I don't want the ship region. All I would do is simply go here and click on the little I to hide it. And I'm also going to hide the shipper ID and the freight number. Okay, so that is looking better with the information that I want. One thing to note here is that I actually added this charge ID. This charge ID is from Stripe. I have added it in the sales order right here. So this column has been added by me and I have done this so that we can demonstrate how to issue Stripe refunds on particular orders. So once again, this was not with the Northwind data here. This is a column that I populated myself and created myself. But don't worry, if you're using the link in the description below, you should see this too. Okay, so while we're here, I'm just going to rename all of these as well. So let's maybe change this to emp ID for employee ID. Let's also do order date shipped date required date Ship name, I'm actually going to hide. I don't really think we need this. Ship address, I'm just going to put ship address like so. Ship city, I'm just going to leave as city. Postcode, I'm going to put postal code. And let's just leave this as country and the charge ID. Wonderful. So this is already looking much better for me. Great. So we have our table. This is looking good. Let's go ahead and add a few more tables while we're here. So I can go ahead and perhaps let's add the table of customers as I think that is some good data that I would want as a startup. So once again, I would just go into here, click new resource query, making sure that I am on the Northwind CRM data as that is the Google Sheet that we have linked here. I'm going to read data from a spreadsheet. I am also going to select which ID, so Northwind data is what we call this spreadsheet. And then the sheet name, well, we know that is customer. So I'm simply just going to type customer here and click save and run. And while I'm here, I'm going to rename this query so that we can keep tracking them better. Get customer data just like so. Great. So now we can put another table in. However, I'm going to show you a really cool way to organize your data. We can use the tabs component. So if I just go ahead and whack in the tabs here, I can now put one table on tab one 
and another table on tab two. So I'm going to put all my sales order. I'm just going to drag that table, drag this table up in here. And there we go. So these are now our sales orders. We can even put some text here in order to make this more obvious to everyone. So I'm just going to grab some text and I'm simply going to put sales orders. Like so. We can also make this bold if we wish. We are using Markdown to make this bold. Markdown is a lightweight markup language for creating formatted text using a plain text editor. It's the same thing you use when writing GitHub readmes. You can find all the syntax you need here if you wish. So there we go. Now that's more clear that that's sales orders. And then I can also do so on tab two. So on tab two, this is going to be customers. So I'm just going to put customers making sure that it's spelled correctly like so and making sure I'm on the query. I'm just going to grab a table and just put it here in order to populate this with the data that we see from our query displaying right here after we have run the query. So there we go. Great. Once again, if you wish, you can choose to hide certain things. Perhaps let's go ahead and hide a few now because this is quite a lot of information. So perhaps I don't want the fax number. I can go ahead and hide that. I can also hide the region if I wish. It is totally up to me. So perhaps I will hide the region. I think this is enough data for me. And of course, we can just pull that out. So, great. So we've got our customer data and then we also have our sales orders. We can also, of course, rename the tab. So I can do so right here, sales orders. And then we have customers as well. So there we go. I'm going to actually do one more table before we continue adding other things. Another table that I would like to add is the table of orders themselves, because at the moment we can see here the order number and it gives us the information about the customer and the shipping date and the status. However, I just want to know what is exactly associated with this order. So for this, I'm actually going to use the order detail. So I'm going to get this table in here. So once again, new resource query, making sure that I am on Northwind CRM data. I'm going to read data and I'm going to choose the sheet Northwind data and the sheet name is order detail. So I'm just going to go order detail like so, making sure that it's put correct and save and run. And there we go. So we have that here. Let's also rename this to get order details. I'm just going to drag that once again up here so that we can see the order details just like that. Okay, wonderful. So this is looking good. Once again, perhaps let's put some text here just to let everyone know that these are order details. And I'm going to get rid of that emoji. We can actually do some editing on here too. So for example, here is my tab. We can style the tab with all these pre-configured things, or we can, you know, go fully custom. At the moment, I'm simply just going to choose to change the header like so. So I'm going to choose to make this white. And that's already looking a little bit more stylish for me. Please feel free to go wild. That part is totally up to you. So there we go. We have now completed the part where we put in all our tables. Now I'm going to show you how to create pie charts and visually show this data thanks to these components right here. So I'm just going to go and use a component such as chart in order to do this, or we can make a progress circle. That part is completely up to us. For now though, I'm just going to create a new tabs 
item here. So tabs component, I'm just going to drag that in so that we can display different types of data on different tabs. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger like so. And great. And once again, I'm just going to change the header background to be white. So I can simply just drag this up here or I can put in FFF -F 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 to symbolize white by myself. So tab one, I think the tab one is going to be an overview. So let's make this an overview and it's going to just be an overview of the amount of orders that we have shipped. So I'm going to use the table right here. I'm going to use the ship date in order to show us how many orders have been shipped. And I'm also going to use the table data here in order to show us how many items have been sold at full price. Okay. Cause you can see discounts have applied to some. I want to know exactly how many orders we have sold at full price. So to do this, I'm simply going to get the progress circle and drag it in here. Just like so. So here we have a progress circle and now let's link it up. At the moment, the value is hard coded. However, we don't have to hard code it. We can use the table data in order to make this dynamic. So as we said, we want to show how many orders have been fulfilled or in other words, shipped. So we are going to get our sales order data, which is an array, and we are going to use the JavaScript method of filter to filter out each order that has a ship date of not an empty string. As if it is not an empty string, it means a ship date exists, and we can say this order is fulfilled. Next, we are going to find out how many of those exist, and we will do so with the length property on the array. We will then get that value and divide it by the total amount of orders in the get sales order data array and multiply it by 100 as that is how percentages work. Okay, so fulfilled orders over total of orders multiplied by 100 will give us the percentage of fulfilled orders. So to do this, this is the syntax for doing so in here. I need to get these two curly braces. Well, we know that this table is made up of get sales order data. So Let's get sales order data, get sales order data, and we need to get its data. So we can use this in order to see how the data is formed. So here is get sales order data, and you will see that comes back as an object. That object has data in it, which is why we are getting data. And data is an array. It's an array of different objects. So let's filter our array. I'm going to use the JavaScript method of filter to filter out each item in the array. Let's call it an order. So like so order and for each order in our array i'm going to get the orders shipped date and if it does not equal an empty string then i want to get this array's length and then just divide it over the get sales order data, data length. So the length of the entire array. Ah, oh, there was a spelling mistake here. Let's go ahead and correct get sales order data. There we go. Get sales order data. And now let's multiply by this 100 because that is how you would get a percentage. So there we go. A percentage. So just talking this through again, what we are doing is getting the sales order data that we see here. So as you can see here, this is the object that returns back. We are then going into data, which is an array essentially of all this information. And for each item in this array, which we have called order, we are going to filter out by the shipped date so this right here and if ship date is null so it doesn't contain anything well then we know that it's not been shipped and then we're going to divide that by the length of this entire array so by the amount of items in these sales orders and multiply by 100 because that is how you'd get the percentage so as you will see here 97 percent of our orders have been shipped so in other words 97 percent of our orders have a shipped date wonderful so hopefully that was easy. Let's carry on. So now once again, I'm just going to drag over some text 
Let's drag that over here and let's do shipped orders just so people can know what we are talking about. Shipped orders. Once again, just get rid of the emoji. We don't need that. And then we can also have some text to tell us exactly the percentage. So once again, I'm just going to drag that up here. And we can do something like this. I'm just going to get rid of that. Currently. And then we can put the percentage in there if we want. Currently, 97% of all orders have been shipped. Just so it's super clear to whoever's reading. And once again, this should be easy. We can actually grab the value of this if we want. So this is progress circle one. So I can, instead of doing the calculation again, just get progress circle one. And I can get its value. So there we go. And we can use some JavaScript on this to make it to two decimal places if we wish to fix and then just pass through a two. Just like so. Great. So this is looking good. Let's just add a percentage here and wonderful. So now that we've done that, how do you think we would make a percentage for all the orders that have been sold at full price? Well, once again, I would simply grab a progress circle. So this is progress circle number two this time. Just going to put that in here. And this time, let's get the get order details. So get order details data. That's correct. So I don't want the value six to be card coded. I want to get the order details data. Get order details data, which is the array. And this time I'm actually going to filter by the discount. So very similar to what we did last time. I'm going to use the filter JavaScript method to filter each order. So I'm just going to put order. I'm going to call every item in the array an order. And for each order, I'm going to get the order discount. Discount, because that is what it's called here. The order. Let's go into an item. Discount. And if the order discount equals the string of zero, because that is what we have here. We have strings of zero, not numbers. Then I want to get the length of the array. So I want to get exactly how many have the string of zero under discount and divide this by the array itself. So get order details data dot length. And of course, multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. So there we go, making sure that this is in two curly braces because that is the syntax for doing so. Okay, great. So we can see 61% of my orders have been sold at full price. So I'm just going to copy that. And then once again, let's just get the progress circle two value this time. Currently 61.11% of all orders have been sold at full price. And then let's just make sure we have no spelling mistakes here either. And great. And once again, let's perhaps just give this a title. This time saying full price orders. So full price orders. Just like so. I'm just making sure that they are all aligned correctly to make them look good next to each other. So there we go. Okay, great. So we have now learned how to use the 
progress circles, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to show a statistic. So let's go ahead and perhaps this time show something like the total of all the orders. So for this, I'm just going to get the unit price and add it all up. Okay, so that's what I want to do and multiply it by the quantity sold. So unit price by quantity. And for this, I'm actually going to use a statistics component. So we already have this here. It's already sort of nicely styled for us to look like a statistic. So there we go. Let's also perhaps move these down now. I'm just going to move these down. Of course, the styling is completely up to you. Please feel free to go wild on the styling however you wish. I'm also going to put in a divider. So just whack that in here. Again, this is just a styling preference. Please feel free to style this up however you wish once you have got to grips with the retool tool. Okay. So just putting these circles back like that, perhaps making them smaller. Again, you could just fiddle around with this forever. So please just bear with me and great. So here I want to show the total of all the orders sold. So I'm just going to put total in like so total. And then here, well, we don't want to hard code this. Once again, let's get up our curly braces because we want to get, we can also do it by table. So this is table three. Let's get table three. Let's get the data in it. And we just want to go by selected row. So I can use selected row, selected row, and then I can get the data. And what I can do is get its quantity. And then I just have to multiply it by the table three selected row data unit price. Okay, so now whatever row I click on, it will show me the total. So that is looking pretty good. Perhaps let's maybe make this clearer what this is. Total of selected row. And now we can simply get the total just by clicking the row. So that is quite handy for us as small business owners. I also just want to perhaps get rid of this as it doesn't really mean anything. So let's get rid of the caption here. And I don't really need this increase amount. So we don't want a positive trend. I'm just going to delete that like so. Great. So there we go. Now we've just made a useful tool to essentially show us the total of the selected row. The next thing I want to do is just show us the total amount of customers that we have in this dashboard and the total amount of orders. Okay, so this is really an overview. This tab is everything to do with an overview of the total dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that. So this time I'm simply just going to use text for, to do this. And in here, I want to be able to show all the customers that we have. So I'm just going to, once again, perhaps I'm just going to hard code customers here like so. And then in here, well, I do want to display the amount of customers that we have. So to do this, I'm going to use get customer data and then just get the length of all of this data right here because this data is the customer data. So if I just simply go by length of the amount of essentially rows that we have, that should give me the customer amount that we have in this dashboard. So there we go. Once again, if we look at this table, all I have done is simply get the length of the array and the array symbolizes the rows. Okay. So each array item is essentially a row. So if I just count the rows, it will show me the amount of customers that we have. Great. So there's our customer data. Uh, I can, of course, spread this out a little bit if I wish. And here we can have the order data. So this is going to be the amount of orders. And once again, to get the order amount, well, I'm simply going to get the sales order data. So get sales order, data, data, and then just get the length. Great. 
So now we can see the amount of orders that we have. We can also see the amount of customers. And if I add orders to this table, this should change dynamically. So this is looking good. There is our overview. Let's carry on. Let's have a look at tab two. For tab two, I want to show exactly what the work distribution is by employee. So if we have a look at the sales orders, you will see that each order, we can actually have a look here as well, has an employer ID by it. So right here, employer ID. So we know what order is assigned to which employee, but we want to see that visually. So for this, I am just going to use another component. This time I am want to create a pie chart. So to do this, I'm going to go to charts and I'm just going to drag this over like so. And I'm also going to select pie chart. And this time we are getting the sales order data. That is correct. However, I just want to show the data by its employer ID. So under value labels, let's select employer ID just like so. And there we go. So now we can see all the work done by employer ID. So essentially what is happening here is that we can see that employer number four has the most work, has the most orders assigned to them. So this is looking good. Let's carry on. The next thing I want to do is actually show me the employer's name by this number, right? Because we have the data here. If you look here, we have the employees along with the employer ID. So once again, I'm going to go in here and click a new resource query, making sure that Northwind CRM data is selected. But this time, making sure that Northwind data is selected too as the spreadsheet name, I want to get the employee, making sure that it's spelled exactly the same as it's spelled here. So employee and just click save and run. And once again, I'm just going to get a table, making sure that I'm on this query. Let's call this get employee data. And I'm just going to drag in a table right here. And that will show me all the employee data, just like so. So this is looking good. I can now get the employee data. I can also hide things, of course, like for example, let's say I just want their name. I can do so very easily like this by hiding all the other tabs. Great. So now we have the employee ID, we have their last name, their first name, as well as their title. Wonderful. And let's just rename this tab to distribution. So work distribution, distribution, like so. And I'm just going to make another tab. And this time, the tab that I want to create is a tab called team. And a title, another one called demo graphic to show us where most of our orders come from. Great. Now for team, well, I'm actually just going to get the same table right here and I'm just going to show us all the data that we sort of heard before, because I think it's useful to have, you know, all the employee data, not just the first name and the last name so that we can filter through it. So this is going to hold all our team data just like so. And demographic. Well, as we said, the demographic, I want us to show exactly where most of our orders are coming from. So I can do so easily. Once again, I'm going to use a pie chart for this. So let's go ahead and find a pie chart. And this time I actually want to get the customer data. Let's get the customer data. Let's do it by where the customer is based. Customer data, just like so, making sure this is a pie chart. And this time I just want to get the country because that's what I want to display. I want to show what the breakdown is by country for all our customers. So just like that, we can even position this uh, however we want. So perhaps this is a good way and wonderful. You will see that most of our customers come from the US just by simply dragging a pie chart like so. Okay, great. So this is looking good. Let's move on. I'm just going to drag this a bit lower. 
to make sure that's at the same level. We will be doing all the styling a bit later on. This is looking good for now. So great, we are displaying all the data that we have in the Google spreadsheet. We are picking out which sheets we want to use. And then we are also getting an overview of the data that we have imported in here in various tabs that we have made. The next thing that I want to do is actually add data from our spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. So as we mentioned at the moment, we're just reading data. I can also add data to this spreadsheet from this platform. To do this, I'm going to show you how to do this. First off, let's actually create a modal. So I'm going to grab the modal like so. I'm just going to drag it in here under the sales orders title. And I want this modal to pop up and essentially be able to create a new order that I add in here. So let's go ahead and do that. A modal is a pop-up window that we are going to see to add the data to our spreadsheet as we just mentioned. We will do this by populating the modal with form field inputs and a submit button. So first off, what do we want in our modal? Well, we're going to have lots of inputs, essentially input all of this data. But first off, let's just start perhaps with a title. I want my title to say create an order as that is what is happening here. So create an order. Just like so. We can also change the background. So if I perhaps want it red, so like a red like this, that is also possible too. Okay, so there we go. And there is an option to create a form to make our lives easier. So let's go ahead and find that form first. So I'm just going to search for form and drag that in here. So now this is good as it comes with all the button and the styling and it just makes it a little bit nicer for us to look at. So here is our order form. Just dragging this all the way up here and let's just drag out the title as well. Great. And now let's go ahead and get inputs for all of this data. So all of the data you see in the row we're going to have to collect. So the first thing that we're going to collect is the order ID. So let's go ahead and do that here, perhaps. The value we're going to leave empty, enter value, or we could have an order number as the placeholder. It is totally up to us. Uh, the label, we're going to put order ID as that's what we want to put in here, just like so. And we can hide the label, we can show the label, we could also make the label appear at the top or bottom, it is completely up to you. So there's my input for the label, let's carry on. The next input that I need is to get the employer ID, so let's go ahead and do that because the order date we're going to have to select. So I'm just going to make that up here, so here's a label, and then for this let's call this employee ID just like so and once again let's also make the same for the customer ID so let's put customer ID so customer ID employee ID the next thing we do is some dates so let's go ahead and get a date picker up so I can do so quite simply, just move these down a little bit perhaps. And this time let's get the date picker and just drag that in here. So here we have the date picker. I'm going to call this ordered by or ordered date. And then we can select a date. Just copy paste that. Okay. So we've got the order date. The next thing we need is the required by. So required by date. 
And then finally, we need the address fields. So perhaps let's put a divider in there. So I'm just going to drag a divider in just so we can separate the two visually. And now let's get an input. So a text input. Just drag it all the way over here. And this is going to be for the address. put that below the divider. So I'm just going to drag the divider up here. We're also going to have one for the city, the country, and the region. So here we have four inputs, all text inputs. If for whatever reason you need a number input, there is one specifically for numbers. So just bear that in mind. So these are all text inputs. So we've got the address. The next one, I want to be city. This one, I want to be country. So let's just change the label of that. And this one, I want to be region. And we have one more thing. So we're not actually done in this address section because we also need the postcode. So let's also have the postcode. Okay, so that is it for the region or address parts. Once again, we split this out because we do need some more things, even though we can't see the ship ID and the ship ID and the freight ID and the shipped on date because we hit some of them. We are going to have to put this into our form as this data is required. I'm simply just going by the fields here. Okay, so I'm just going through all of them and just making sure we are collecting data for all of those to be populated. So once again, let's just get the divider out. Let's drag that across here. And then let's go ahead and just put in some more inputs. So once again, I'm just going to drag that below here. This time, let's perhaps make the label at the top because we're going to have three here. So one two, three, and then just position them a little bit. So label one, two, and three. And let's have this as ship name. Let's have this as shipper ID. And let's have this as the freight field, freight, shipper ID, not shipped. And finally, we're just going to have a date picker to pick the date that this was shipped on. So once again, let's get the date picker and just drag that in here. So just like so, and give this the label of shipped on. Great. So this is looking good. And of course we have the submit button as well. So nice. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. Okay, great. So we're collecting all that data, but now we need to essentially get all this data and get this data to make a query with it, to add data to the sales order table. So what I'm going to do is create a new query this time. This query, let's call this add sales order data. Okay, so that's what our query is called. This will be to Northwood CRM. And then we're going to append data to a spreadsheet. Choose the spreadsheet. Well, that's Northwood data. And the sheet we want to add to is sales order. So let's just go ahead and put sales order like so. And in here, what do we need to do? Well, we need to add data that looks like this. So let's look in here. Let's look at the data. Okay. And we need to make an object that essentially looks exactly like this. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to make an array. So open up the square braces. 
And then we could just make an object and paste all the data like so, but I think this is quite messy, so I'm going to take you through this step by step. Okay, so open up the array, make an object, and we're going to copy this object right here. So the first thing that we need to put in is the... Well, we could start with the charge ID. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just make sure that everything's in order. So the first one is charge ID. Always making sure to spell everything exactly the same as you see it. So charge ID. And for now, I'm just going to put the string of test, put a comma. And the next thing is the cust ID. So once again, let's put the string of cust ID and put the string of test. The next is ID for employee ID. And once again, I'm putting test and you get it. So fright is next test by a comma. I'm just going to copy this actually because that is a lot of repetition. Fright, order, date. Then we have the required date. Just paste. Next we have the ship address and paste. Next, we have the ship city and paste. Ship country is next, so ship country. Ship name. Then we have the shipped date. Shipper ID, ship postal code, and the ship region. Okay, so that is it. Let's quickly make sure that we didn't make any spelling mistakes, even though we will get an error. So that's all the data that we have. Okay, and let's check it out. So I'm just going to click save and run this. So I'm just going to get this up a little bit so we can see what returns back to us. Okay, so that ran successfully. We saw the little pop up. Now let's have a look here and go all the way to the bottom of sales orders as we did append the row to this table. So it should appear at the very end of this table. And there we go. I did press it twice. So two rows have been appended and everything is working great. Wonderful. So now that the test is working, let's replace these test strings with actual values from our form field right here. So all I'm going to do is match the input value to the key. Okay. So there we go, charge ID. Well, we know that the charge ID at the moment, I'm going to hard code it because all the charge IDs are the same. This is just a test charge ID that I'm getting from the Stripe API that we will go into later. So this one I can hard code. So let's go ahead and do that and put that as a string. The next thing is the customer ID. So we know that that's going to be text input two's value. So I'm just going to replace this. Let's get our curly braces up and I'm going to grab this element, which we called test input two. Test input two, and I'm going to get its value just like so. That should say text input value, apologies, text input value. Okay, great. So this is looking good. We can, of course, if we really want to change these. So if I really wanted to rename them, I could. So just know that there is an option to do that. I'm not going to do this for this tutorial as that will take a lot of time, but to know that if I wanted to change this, I could. Great. Now let's get the employer ID. So for this, we're going to use text input three, get the two curly braces and go text input three dot value. Great. Let's do the same for the freight. So here we go. That's text input nine. Once again, let's just get rid of these 
quote marks. <laughs> Let's get the test word here, get our curly braces. And this time we need to get text input nine. So text input nine dot value, making sure to spell text input correctly, just like so. The order date, well, the order date is date time two. So let's go ahead and replace the test value here with date time two dot value. The required date, once again, that is date time one. So I'm just going to get the test and use the curly braces to get date time one dot value. So it really is this simple. That's all I'm doing. The shipping address or the ship address, in other words, that's going to be text input seven. So I'm just going to get the curly braces and get text input seven. We can use the drop down to make our lives a little bit easier. The ship city is going to be six. Country is five and region is eight. So let's try to remember that. I'm just going to copy this one. Ship city we said was six. Ship country, I think we said that was five, but we'll double check. And the ship region is eight. Do we have ship region here? Ah, here we go, ship region. So let's make that eight. And just a few more left. We need the postcode, which is four. So let's find the postcode in here. There we go. And replace it with text input four. And then we just have the ship name, which is 10, ship ID 11. And I think that should be it. So ship name is text input 10. Ship ID is 11, and I think there's just two dates left. So let's have a look again back here. Uh, one date left. Date one is the shipped on date. So let's just go in here. And this is date one. Date one dot value. So this is looking good. Let's test it out. So I'm just going to save that. And this time to test it out, I'm just going to input some data. So let's go ahead and do this. Employee ID, I'm going to say two. Customer ID, three. Order ID, again, this is just for tests. Let's pick a date. So I'm just going to pick the date and the time for this one. The address again, I'm just going to put test for now. City test, country test, region test, postcode 33, ship name A, A, and then freight A. And then shipped on, let's just have a date for this one. Let's go with the 10th of Nov. And then click run. So now, okay, we did get an error. Why is this? So we can actually read right here what has happened. And you will see the line has not been added. There was an error. And I think it is something to do with this. Ah, we have left a little apostrophe there, so that's gone. And I think we also don't have the order ID. So that is one we didn't pick out, if I am not mistaken. Taken. So I'm just going to put that in the front or after the order date. So just in here, just to make sure it's the same as here for readability. So order ID and the order ID is going to be the text input one. So text 
input one dot value. And once again, just make sure to format that correctly. So put a comma there and great. So now if we save this and run it and have a look in here, well, there you go. The row has been updated with the correct values in each column. Great. So that is now working. We have now figured out a way to add data from this platform to our Google Sheet. I just need to do one last thing is that is connect the button right here so that it sends when we click this button. So I'm just going to click that right here. So I've just selected the button if you can see that. So here we have it and we need on submit. We could make the button full width if we wish. On submit, so there's the submit button. We also want some events and I just want to trigger the query add sales order. So I want to run this query rather than us running it manually. I could do it by attaching it to this button. Okay, so that's what I want to happen just like so. And we could also add other things. So for example, I can also add instead of trigger a query just to send confetti so that we know that is done. And then as a third thing, so after we get the sales order data, I want to display it in here. So in the table, which means I essentially need to make a request to get all of this data again. So I need to run the query to get sales order data. So I'm just going to do that in here. So in the query rather than on the button, and I'm going to trigger the query, get sales order data and save that. So now when we fill out this form and click the submit button, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the submit button. And when we click the submit button, so let's do another one this time. This time I'm going to put order ID www at the end. And I'm just going to click submit. So we are making a query to add data to this Google Sheet. We are then sending the confetti and we are making a GET request to get all the data in here, which means that now if I look here and just go to the end, so let's go to the very end. I'm going to put in 76. Ta-da! There is the new line that we have just added. So I'm just going to zoom back in again so you can see it a little bit better. So great, this is all working fine. I'm really happy with how this is working. Of course, on here, there are Imbit tools to download all the data. You can also filter and you can also reload manually if you wish. Okay, so these are all options that you can do on the table as well. Great. Um, while we are here, I'm just going to change the color of this as I think blue is a bit passive. Let's go ahead and make it red. So just like that. Wonderful. And I'm just going to go back to the first page. So page one. Great. So we can now add data directly to our database here using the platform. But there are other things we could do as well. So I can actually also delete data from this table so that it shows up here as well. So that is the next part. We've just added data. Next, I'm going to show you how to delete data too. Okay, so for this part, I'm actually going to have to write a new query to delete data. However, first off, let's go ahead and add a button to this table so I can do so easily by selecting the table. And this time, I'm not actually going to add another column. I'm going to add an action. So here are my actions, and I'm just going to call this the delete action. So here's my action I just created, and let's call this delete. Okay, so just like so. So there we go. That has now been appended to the left of my table. And on here, I want to run a query. Well, that query is going to be the delete row query. So let's go ahead and write it. I'm just going to create a new resource. And make sure that it is using the Northwind CRM data. And next, I want to not append data, not update. I want to delete a single row from the spreadsheet. So that is looking good. Let's choose a sheet. Well, that is the Northwind data sheet. And the sheet name that I want to work with is the sales order sheet. So making sure that I'm on this sheet right here. And now I'm just going to have to filter to match row. And let's go by order ID. 
So I'm just going to select the order ID table, making sure to spell it exactly the same as we did in here. So I'm going to filter by order ID and make sure that equals the table. So table one, however it's spelled here. And I'm just going to put selected row data order ID. So just like that. So we're literally going to search for a match by order ID and we're going to find that order ID and delete the entire row if it equals the selected order ID of this row. Okay, so I'm just going to save this and let's rename this to delete selected row. Great, and hit preview. So at the moment I'm on this row, that's the selected row I'm on, and this is the row that would get deleted from our spreadsheet if I hit run. Okay, so there we go. And of course, this is great, but we don't want to run this manually. We want to attach it to the actions. So I'm just going to get that and run a query. The query I want to run is the delete selected row. And there we go. So now let's check it out. It's going to move that down here and let's delete this row. So I'm just going to click here. And great. So now if we look in here, that row is now deleted. And of course, we need to refetch this data. So on success of this, I want to add one more thing and I want to trigger a query. And that query is to get sales order data again and just click save. So let's go ahead and delete another row. So this time, let's delete this row. And I'm just going to click delete. So now that is deleted, you'll just see that disappear. And ta-da, this table refreshes with the fresh data from this spreadsheet. Great. So we are now adding data. We are deleting data. This is looking awesome. Now, we have one last thing to do, and that is process a refund. So for this, I'm going to show you how to do this using the Stripe API. So to do this, I'm actually just going to create a container so that we can store our refund in here so that it looks a little bit nicer visually. So I'm just going to head and created that. And now let's also create another form that we're going to put in here. So I'm just going to put in a form into here. So let's again, just find a form that we can use. Let's go ahead and put that in here like so. Let's perhaps also change the button color. So I don't really like this button. Let's change the color. Let's make it some stripe colors, perhaps. So I'm just going to use the hex code that I have here, just like so. And then I'm also going to make this button the full width. And not only that, let's change what it says. I'm going to say refund and then also notify as we want to send an email notifying the person that the refund has been made. So great. Let's go ahead and just put in some text so we know what's happening in here. So I'm just going to drag that in here. And this should say create refund just like so. Don't need the exclamation point. Now let's put in some text. And then we'll just make a little note so people know to select a row from the sales order orders to refund an amount. Okay, because we want to pick out all the information from a row we select, just like we did with the delete in order to make our refund. Okay, so there we go. The next thing I want to populate. So I want to now populate fields by me just selecting a row so we don't have to do much manually. And this is going to be the charge ID that we want to refund. So I'm just going to use that. We also want the refund amount. So for this, I'm actually going to use a number input as this has to be a number. So I'm just going to drag that in here like so and put the label as refund amount that we decide. 
And then let's also have a refund reason. For this, I'm gonna actually have a select because I only want there to be three or so reasons that you can make a refund. And let's name this refund reason. And let's populate the reasons. So some reasons could be, you know, let's go ahead with did not or we these are the values actually so these are the values we're gonna pick them out by so didn't like I'm just gonna make them strings this one is gonna be too late and this one is going to be can so so those are the values we are going to use in order to pick out our reasons but now let's have also a way to read them a little bit better so we have the values. Let's also perhaps have some display values. So I can actually just clear this and let's just test this out. So test, test. So now there we go. So it's either using these or we can write our own and my own are going to be does not like it. The second one is going to be arrived too late and the third one is going to be would like to cancel so just like so so great now we have our select let's carry on the next thing i'm going to do is just put in a text of the refund summary so i'm just going to drag in some text here and this is just going to be a refund summary Okay, so I'm just going to display a little summary of what we are refunding and why. So I'm just going to drag that in here. Some more text. Oops. Making sure that this actually is a bit bigger. Okay, and in here, I'm just going to put the refund amount. So a little summary of what we wrote above. And I'm going to use number input one dot value to display that. Okay, so just like so. That's my little summary that I'm building. Refund amount, perhaps let's put some of these in here. So we've got the refund amount and then let's also have reason. So again, I'm just going to put reason and of course it's blank for now because we haven't picked one this is select one so i'm just going to replace this with select one but if i now choose one like does not like it that will show up here okay as the value so there we go that is sort of a recap and of course if i just put in a number here that will show up there too and lastly i just want to be able to send a message along with you know the refund so what we're what we're going to email to the customer so once again i'm just going to perhaps make this a little bit bigger just like so and just stretch this out a little bit and this time i'm just going to use a text input so text input we could use the rich text editor however i'm just going to use the text area as i don't want anything crazy i just want a message like so that will be sent over in an email but of course if you'd like to use the rich text editor too that is an option okay great now for the message itself well i want to use values from here and what i can do is make an email text so i can go ahead and just write my own javascript here so i'm going to use a javascript transformer to do this and i'm just going to use this to write some javascript so for example if i get the order id so what is the order id well we know that the order id is whatever row we've selected from the table so i'm going to use selected row data order id and save that as the order id the other thing that i want to save is the order amount so let refund amount equal and this time i'm just going to use the 
number input one, so number input one value, just like so. And now we can construct our message, which is simply going to say dear order and then the order number. And then I went ahead and made the refund of X amount to your card. If there's anything else you can do, please let me know. Okay, so that's all I'm going to write. So let's go ahead and do it. Now, let's also write different things for different reasons that we chose for the refund. So in fact, if I go let opening blurb equal and then I'm just going to use a switch case so I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger for you I'm going to switch out the reason so I'm going to go select one dot value and switch it out so if the reason is too late well then the opening blurb, blurb, making sure to spell exactly as it's written up there, is going to be, I'm making sure it's back ticks actually, I'm so sorry about your order being, being late, I went ahead and refunded the value to your card and of course replacing this with the refund amount so i'm simply going to do refunded and then back tick plus refunded amount plus and then the string again okay so that's for the case too late make sure this is select one okay because we are using the value from here select one so that is one case essentially okay so there we go and then let's put a break the next case that we're going to cover is the didn't like so making sure i to spell it exactly the same as we did here so didn't like did not like just like that didn't like and what happens with this case? Well, let's again change the opening blurb. So opening blurb to be back tick. I'm so sorry you did not like your order. So that's all I'm gonna do for this one, making sure to put a full stop at the end of these. And then finally, the last case we're going to do is cancel. And what happens when we cancel? Well, the opening blurb this time is going to be changed to making sure that it's a capital B. I fully cancelled your order as you requested, full stop. Great, so that will change the opening blurb. Now, what do we want to return? Well, let's just return order and then pass through the order ID. So essentially this right here, the order ID. So let's get some curly braces. And in here, I'm just gonna put order ID and then let's also add a another string to this this time I'm going to put in the opening blurb as it is after the changes with the switch case I went ahead and refunded and then we'll put in the refund amount which we have also defined at the top refund amount to your card and then let's finish it with best wishes retool bot and save that and let's rename this as email text 
just like so. Email. So there we go, email text. And in here, well, I'm just going to replace the default value with email text dot value. Don't forget to put in the breaks between each of the cases as well. So break and break. Also case should not have the double dots here. So just get rid of those. And there we go. Let's try change the reason. And great, that is updating as it should. Now I do want this to appear on separate lines so I can simply do that like so. So in the string, I'm just gonna do forward slash n, forward slash n, and preview that, save it. Okay, so that now spaces out. Let's do the same after here. So I'm just gonna copy this, put it after the string, and do so after here too. So there we go. That is looking a lot neater. And if we of course change the reason again, would like to cancel, that text should now update too. And it's also updating with the refund amount and the order ID that we have selected. So this is looking great. We've got the text showing up. This is looking good. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger still so that we can read the whole text when it's longer. So just like that. Wonderful. So this is looking good. The next thing I need to do is just connect this to the Stripe API to process the refund amount on to the charge ID. So if I just select this, well, the charge ID, we need to actually show that in here too. So I'm just gonna get another text tag like so. And this is just gonna display the selected row. So once again, I'm gonna get the table one selected row data, and I'm just going to get the charge ID. So that should now show up for us on whatever one we click. The charge ID is the same as we are just using Stripe's test API, but just know that that will change, okay, if it was different. Okay, so to recap, we have just used a transformer here. I have used a JavaScript transformer as because we have three different messages we want to send one for each drop-down value, we need to create a dynamic text field value that will populate with the correct message. This is a perfect use case for a transformer. So great, we are collecting all the data now to actually make a Stripe refund. So for this, I'm actually gonna create a new resource query and this time, well, I want to create a new resource and this time I'm going to select Stripe. So let's call this CRM Stripe resource. You can call it whatever you wish and we need to put an API key. So to do this, all you have to do is sign up to stripe.com. Okay. And here we are going to all the documentations that we need in order to create a refund. So sign up to Stripe, get your API key, and then we are essentially going to use this to create a refund. And we're also going to use some test charges. Okay. So here is my Stripe dashboard. I'm just going to sign in. just like so with my email address that I used to sign up before. And on your dashboard, you will see some test data that you can use in order to test your API. So let's go to the dashboard. Here is the home page and I can use the test data, okay, in order to process a refund just to see it's working. Here is my key as well. So I'm just gonna copy that and put it in here. Please do go ahead and use your own as this will not work. I will be deleting this and just create resource, just like so. So there we go. I've now connected my Stripe API to my Stripe dashboard using my secret key. Now let's go ahead and create a refund. So what I want to do here is I essentially want to run a query when manually triggered and I want to post this to 
refunds. Okay, so it's a post request. There we go. And in here, well, the Stripe account, I'm going to leave that blank and I'm going to leave this blank too. The amount where well, we know that this is going to be the number input one. So number input one dot value because that's the amount I want to refund. And the charge, we also know what the charge is. I can actually just take it from here. So text 17 value, text 17 value. You could have also taken it from table data selected row charge ID. It's up to you. I just think this is perhaps a little bit more foolproof as we're actually seeing the charge ID here. So great. This is looking good. Let's save that. And then let's rename this to post refund. So just like so and just hit preview. And there we go. You will see the response of my refund. You will see that refund has been done. We have refunded the amount one. OK, and if you go to your dashboard and just go to payments. So this is my test data. You will see all your refunds done here at the moment. It was just a preview. OK, so that is how you would see it. And to get your charge ID, all you'd have to do is create a payment and then let's say we have a payment for 20 pounds and then we'd have to just put input the card information. So if I Google Stripe test cards, here we go. This is exactly what I need and I'm going to make a fake payment. So let's just go ahead and use these test cards. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to essentially make a fake payment using this fake card data. It says to use any three digits. So let's just go ahead and do that as well as put any future date. So let's put 30th or December 03 and then one, two, three. This is saying it's in the past. So 12, 21, there we go. So there we go and submit payment. OK, so we've just created a fake payment on our dashboard. There we go. OK, so here is our payment. And if I want to get the charge ID, as we need to get the charge ID in order to make a refund, here is the charge ID. So instead of just taking the charge ID that I have hard coded here, please go ahead and essentially replace this with your own charge IDs here. So just like so. And just literally just replace it with all the charge IDs I have here. It's all the way to the bottom so that you can put your own charge ID in order to make refunds. So there we go. I've just replaced all the charge IDs with my own charge ID from the Stripe API dashboard. Click save, refresh this page so we get the new charge IDs showing up. OK, so there we go. That is now updated with the charge ID that we just put in here. And now if I make a refund, so instead of testing this out, I'm actually going to run this. So at the moment, I'm refunding the amount of zero. Let's go ahead and make the refund amount one and click run. There we go. We have now refunded one to the 20 pound charge that we have here. And if we look at this, so let's go ahead and look at all the payments again. You will see a partial refund of one was made onto this payment. So we have just partially refunded this charge right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Please watch this a few times. If it does not, make sure to replace all this data here with your own charge that you created on the Stripe dashboard. OK, great. So we are processing refunds from this dashboard now. Let's carry on. The next thing that I want to do is actually notify us when we create the refund. So the refund's just been made, but I also want to send an email. So I'm going to do that next. For this, we are going to integrate with Google Mail. So hopefully you do have Google Mail. If you don't, you can use the SendGrid API too. However, this is just my pref personal preference, but it is up to you, whichever one you choose. So to do this, I'm actually going to create a new query again. 
So just here, and this time we're going to create a new resource and choose the SMTP API. Okay, so that is the one I want to use. Let's go ahead and call this Gmail like so. The host, the host is going to be smtp.gmail com just like so as we are using gmail the port is going to be 465 the username you just have to literally use your own uh, email address for this so i'm going to put ania at freecodecamp.org and the password is actually the password for your email address so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to put in my actual password in here and just test the connection Okay, so my connection was a success, so I'm going to create this resource. However, if you are having issues, you might need to do some extra configuration on your Gmail. So you might have to go into your actual Gmail account. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This is something that I had to do in order to get this working. And in your settings, with forwarding and pop IMAP, just make sure that you enabled IMAP and make sure you've enabled POP as well. And one last thing you need to do is enable all apps like so. Okay, so you're sort of lowering, I guess, your security settings and allowing third parties to use your email on your behalf. Okay, great. So that is something that you need to do in order to get this done. Hopefully that works after you've enabled those three things and now we can get to hooking this up so that it sends an email when we press the button. So let's continue with this, our query. Well, let's use the Gmail query just made. The from email, we're going to do ania at freecodecamp.org. The to email, I'm just going to hard code this for now to kuboania at gmail.com. And then the subject is going to be your refund has gone through. And then I'm just going to get the whole text area one. So text area one dot value. Okay. And let's save this. And now let's run it. And if I look in my email, you will see I got an email saying my refund has gone through. Okay, from Ania at freecocamp.com. So this is looking good. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. Let's carry on. Of course, we can also have an input for the email. That is completely up to you. In fact, I would recommend it. So just go ahead and just drag an input tag. So for example, once again, I would do so like this. Let's just go ahead and put, you know, email address that we want to send this to. Just drag it out like so. And let's put the label as email address. And this just means that I'm going to get text input 12 this time. Text input 12 dot value. Okay, so whatever email we put in here, that's the email that it will be sent to. Great. So we're sending an email. We're making a refund. Let's just hook up this button because we want this to trigger the query for yes, indeed, Gmail, but also posting a refund first. And let's just make sure that this is renamed to send email just for readability. So we are triggering that, but we're also going to trigger the send email query too. So two things are being triggered. So this is looking great. I'm really happy with this. I'm going to do one last thing before moving on to use the Postgres approach. And that is just show you how to use mapping in order to use the two databases. So for example, if I want to use the employee ID to show me the employee name. Okay, so I'm going to get the three. I'm going to look in here and I'm going to get the name. I'm going to show you how to do this now. So let's go ahead and just create an overview of an order. So I'm going to drag this in here like so. And let's call this overview of order number. 
and I'm just going to put in the order number. So it's going to be the selected row this time. So I'm just going to go into table one, selected row, data, order, ID, making sure number is here. Just get rid of that. So we're going to show the order number. And once again, I'm just going to drag through some explainer text to explain to the user what is happening here. Select row from sales or does for overview. Okay, so that's sort of explaining what's happening. And now once again, I'm actually going to get some text here. And this is going to have the customer name. Let's also do it for the shipping address. Let's also have the employee name. And then one last thing I'm going to do is just use this little cool thing. So if I just go down here, there's so many things you can use. Of course, I'm going to use a timeline. So I'm going to use a timeline to display essentially the order details and how far it's gone and so on. So I'm just going to drag that in here like so. And great. So these can be a little bit smaller. In fact, I am going to shrink them down a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to use the text component again and just put it in here because what I want to do is essentially look in the table and instead of having the customer as an ID, I want to show the name by looking in here, finding the customer ID and returning back the name. Okay, so I could do so easily. All I'm going to do is just delete all of this. And this time I am going to get table, customer table. So this is table two. So let's get table two. Let's get the data from it. And I'm going to pass through the table ones selected row data cust ID. Okay, so I'm just passing that through. I need to make sure that this is an integer. So I'm going to wrap it and pass int to make sure it is. And I'm actually just going to minus one from it. So that's what I'm passing through. I'm passing through the index and I'm getting back the contact name. Okay, because I'm going in here, I'm looking in here, I'm passing through the index and I'm returning the contact name. And the index is whatever this number is minus one. Okay. So that is how you would do that. That is how you would essentially join data from two different tables. Let's do the same for the employee name this time. So just down here, it's essentially all the same thing. However, this time I'm going to look in table three. I believe it's table three. Let's have a look. Is this table? This is table five. I can use table five or I can use table four. It's completely up to me. Let's go ahead and use table four. Why not? So let's look in table four and this time let's get back the first name because contact name doesn't exist. So first name and I'm going to also get the, uh, making sure this is not a custom ID, but this time we're going to pass through the employer ID. So we're getting the first name. I'm just going to copy all this because I also want to get the second name. So there we go. First name and last name. So this is looking good, making sure that that's a space and wonderful. So that again is how you would get data from two different tables. And the last thing I'm going to do is just show the shipping address. This is actually really easy because all I'm going to do is go look in table one, 
which is the main table, get selected row, data, ship address. Okay, because I'm looking at table one, which is this table, and just getting the ship address. So here's a nice little overview for us. And of course, the orders. Well, this is, again, easy because I am simply going to get rid of these. And I'm going to use the Kali braces to go into table one. So the main table, selected row, data, order, date. So we've got the order date. The next thing we need to do is I'm going to change this to be order created as well. Order created and then let's have order required by. And then the final one will be order shipped or shipped date. It's up to you. So shipped date, just so people can see the status of an order. So this required by, so that should be required date. And this should be shipped date. Great. So now whatever order we select, this will all update. Okay, so as you will see here, that's been updated. Let's click this one. As you will see here, this is customer ID 34 and this is employee 4. But if we click it, we will see that customer ID 34 is Shai Cohen and the employee is Yale Pallet. Let's go ahead and click another one. Let's do this one. Jacek Jalito and Sven Buck is the employee. Okay, and of course, these are updating too. So wonderful. This is looking so, so good. Just a few final pieces of styling and then we are ready to move on. So first off, perhaps let's make this a tiny bit bigger. So I'm just going to use some markup to do this and put three hashes here like so, and that will immediately turn a lot bigger like that. And then perhaps let's also have another one here. And I'm not sure what we should call this. Perhaps let's call this, let's just call it overview. Because that is essentially what this is, overview. Be sure to spell it correctly. And then here, let's also have, let's perhaps take out sales orders in here because I think it's a little bit obvious. Uh, I'm going to move this up a little bit. So move up the button. Let's move this down a few smidges. Let's also put this in line with the other thing. And this, let's call this sales order. management. Okay, so I think that's looking a lot more obvious as to what that is. And then let's also make a little header. So here we go. I'm just going to select the header and make the background color. Let's make it this blue just to keep everything sort of the same color. And now let's also put in some text. So I'm just going to drag this over into here. And once again, let's just use with markup, Sergeant Pepper's store, just like so. And then perhaps let's also put e-commerce, C-R-M, okay? So just making it super clear what this is. You can, of course, e-commerce CRM. You can do so much styling in here. It's honestly completely up to you. Uh, I am just going to do the bare minimum, but there's literally hours and hours of styling that you can do to this. Perhaps let's actually make this one line. I don't think it should be two. So there we go. Just like so. And we can also add a profile. So depending on who's logged in, they will have a different profile here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose an avatar and just drag that in. So there I am. Okay, so and that will be for whoever the user is. We can also have various other things. So if you do choose to build this out even further, we can also have a burger 
menu, meaning that if you want to add different pages or if you know you want to start moving things out, for example, if you want the refund page to be on its own page, you can also have a navigation bar here, which will show you different menu items and that will take you to another page. So again, like you could have the refund page on its separate page if you want. That is an option for you too. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this. Everything is now connected. Everything is working. We can issue refunds. We can send emails. We can add new data to this table if it doesn't exist already on our spreadsheet. For example, perhaps you want to put any manual order that wasn't taken online. You can sift through customers using the filter tools. You can look through all your orders. You can look at team members. You can look at demographics. You can have an overview of how many orders shipped, how many orders you've sold at full price, literally pretty much anything you could want. Okay, so this is done for part one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this section. If you want to learn how to use Postgres with this database, that is coming up next. Okay, now it's part two in which we switch out our database to be a Postgres database. Okay, so to do this, I'm actually just going to imitate a Postgres database by putting in some data in here using the manage database approach. So all I'm going to do is simply get all of this data that we see right here. So as you can see, I've already copied it. It is under database samples Postgres SQL Northwind dot SQL. Make sure you are in the Postgres SQL section and just copy all of this. Or if you want, you can literally just get the file as I have here. And then in this file, before we get to switching this out, so as you can see here, we are creating a database. We are then creating tables, so category, region, territory, and of course, sales order. So these are all the tables that we see here. We are essentially creating the tables here and then importing the data. But as you know, we also need to create another column and that is with the charge ID. This is your charge ID. This is the charge ID that you should get from your Stripe dashboard as you should remember from before. So if you go back to your Stripe dashboard under payments, this is the 20 pound payment that we made by creating payment here in the test data section. And all you need to do is get the charge ID. So you will see the charge ID here. It starts with CH. So get that and we are going to create another column in a table and input the charge ID. So we're going to do so in here. Let's search for the sales order table. So here we are creating the table and just after ship country, I'm just going to add charge ID. Okay. And then in here, well, Sure, let's just make it the same as the customer ID. So just put in that like so. Great, so we've done that. And now let's actually go to inputting the data. So here you will see we are inserting the data. We of course need to add another field in here. So what I'm actually gonna do is just find anything that looks like this and then replace it with ship country, but then also add charge ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace all of those. So that is now added. I don't think we use ship country anywhere else apart from in this sales order, which is why I thought it was safe to do this. We indeed don't, it seems to be only in this section. And of course we also need to input the charge ID. So this is gonna take a little bit longer because we can't use the same approach. There's different data being added into here all times. So I essentially need to make a comma and then just paste the charge ID. So let's get this charge ID. Into here like so. So there really, like I said, isn't an easy way to do this. Let's copy this because I'm just gonna Maybe if we select everything in here that is a parenthesis with a semicolon, then we can essentially input the charge ID before this. I'm just going to copy all of these. This will take a while, so just bear with me. This is not an easy process, but we have to do it in order to get our data to look exactly the same as it does on the Google spreadsheet. 
So this is great, of course, all this data that was given to us. It's important to learn how to start working with huge data sets like this, especially when you go on to becoming a software developer, because this is likely the amount of data that you will work with in a small startup, for example, or a bigger startup, whatever you are thinking to join. Okay, so we are nearly there at the bottom of the sales orders that we are inserting. And now all I'm going to do is just delete, make a comma, and then I am going to paste. I didn't need to do that. I'm just going to paste the charge as a string like so. And then I'm also going to just shut that off like this. So I think this is looking okay. Hold on. We seem to have messed something up here. So we've got the postal code, we then have the ship country, and then we have the charge ID. Great. So I am happy with this. Let's save this. And now I'm literally going to get all of this data again. So copy all of it, everything that we have just altered. So once again, we have added another column to the sales order table, and we have just inserted the charge IDs into the table too. So now, I, yes, I am just going to copy all of this and then go up here and let's create a new query, so resource query. And this time I'm going to choose to use the managed database so we can essentially just insert it all into here. So I'm just going to literally paste everything that we copied. This might slow down your computer, so just let it do its thing because we are going to insert data into the manage database. Okay, so just go ahead and click save and just wait for that to do its thing. Okay, and once that is done, let's go ahead and rename this. I'm going to rename this to add data. There seems to be an error, so let's just go ahead and delete the first lines. Okay, so just delete this line and just click save. Ah, we made the character type too long. So where we create the sales order, let's just find that again. We're going to increase this bar char. We can make it 40 just to make sure that we are giving it enough space and click save. Great. So that is how we add data to our managed database. Now let's use it because at the moment we essentially have all this data, but that includes all the tables. So these right here, I just want to get one table and that's the sales orders in order so that we can replace it. So we can use the Postgres database on the main table right here. So let's go ahead and create a new resource here. So resource query and make sure that is on the manage database. And I'm just going to select all because that's how you'd get all from sales order. Okay, so just like we wrote it in here, sales order, it has to be exactly the same as sales order written here. And then let's click preview. And there we go. We are getting the table along with the charge ID that we have just added. Let's go ahead and rename this to something. So I'm going to save this and let's save this get sales order data. Postgres SQL so that we know that it's different to the other get data query. So there we go. That's what I've saved it as. And now I can simply get this table and replace this with this query. Okay, so now we are using the Postgres data instead of the spreadsheet data. So that was super easy. There we go. Let's carry on. So now let's get the customer data. So again, I'm just going to make a new query. And this time, let's call this get customer data Postgres SQL. And again, we're just going to do select all from and this time we're going to go from the customer table so just like so save and run 
And this time I'm just going to replace the customers. So I'm going to go in here, select this table, get customer data, PG SQL. Making sure that it's spelled exactly the same. So let's just go ahead and do this for the other tables. Some of this will be broken because of course we are not using this anymore, but we will fix that in a bit. Let's just make sure we do all of these first. Next, we need to get the order details. So again, new resource query. Let's call this get order details PG SQL. And this time I'm gonna do select all from order detail. Okay, and save and run. So this is all looking good. Let's go ahead and replace this with get order detail PG PG SQL. Same for in here, get sales order data, PGSQL. However, this time we need to go into the data and we actually need to get into the shipped date, okay? And then filter by order, or you can filter by ship date. You can, of course, rename this to whatever you wish. So perhaps this should do shipped date so for each item that exists, let's call it a ship date. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm just going to get the sales order data. Data. This time I'm going to go by order ID length. This is just because our tables are a bit different now. If we go into here, I will show you this. So all I would do is simply go into here and find the query that I am making. So for example, get sales order data. Once again, here's our data, but it's now an object, not an array. I would then have to go into the shipped address, which is an array, and then filter out the shipped date. Okay. So that is the shipped address, where's the ship date, ship date. And I'll just filter out by these. So it's just a little bit of a different structure that you have to be aware of, but you can also have a look in here if you ever get stuck. So great. And this time, again, we are not filtering out by if it doesn't have an empty string, we're just going to go by null. Okay, wonderful. And same for this one here. So this progress circle, we're going to get the order details, Postgres SQL data, but we want to go into the discount this time. And then we're going to filter by the discount itself. So discount, discount. And if it does not equal 0 0.00, actually we should do, then we're going to get the data order ID length. So there we go. Order ID. And there we go. So that is now back to normal. This is all looking good. These should be okay because we are working by table on some of these, so that's fine. However, this one, again, this should be updated. So get customer order data, Postgres SQL data, and this time we need to get by the customer ID because that is what we want. We want to know exactly how many customers. And once again for this, so get sales order data, Postgres SQL data, and let's again do it by order ID. Okay, wonderful. So I think this should be nearly it. Just a few more to go. Let's go ahead and update these right here. So again, get sales order data, Postgres SQL. And this time I can actually just select the custom ID here and hide the order, making sure this is also by employee ID. 
So that is now back to normal. And this one, well, we need to get the employee data. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a new query. And let's call this get employee data Postgres SQL again. And this time we're going to do select all from employee just like so and save and run and then once again it's just a case of replacing this so get employee data pgsql great and the same for here so i'm just going to add pgsql and same for the demographic so customer data pgsql for this one however we also need to do some additional things so let's go ahead and just make sure that this is by country so there we go country and customer id so wonderful and like i said these are the last things we need to do so in this one well essentially we just need to get the we don't need to get the contact name anymore so we just need to do that because we are filtering by contact name instead so there we go and just do the same for here so again we are going to the data and then we are going into the first name array and just getting the value so we don't need to go into any objects and the same for here, last name. And then we can get rid of this like so. Okay, we have one last thing to do. In fact, two more things because we also need to delete data. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Again, we're gonna make a new query and this time I'm going to delete a sales row. Again, I'm just going to add PGSQL so it's clear how we're going to do this. So this is not to get, this is delete. I'm going to do a delete a sales row. And this time I'm going to write delete from sales order table. So let's get the sales order table where order ID equals and then i'm going to get the main table so table one selected row data order id so this is how you would essentially delete a row a complete row okay so i'm going to save that and now i'm going to get this query because we're going to have to replace it in the actions so where we have actions here don't forget that we do need to change this. So let's trigger a different query now and it's gonna be delete sales row. So that is updated. And one last thing we need to do is the add row. What did we seem to have done something wrong in here? Ah, oh, no, that's the other one. So delete sales row is now added to here to the action. Let's just double check it is the correct one. So delete and yes, delete sales row is the one that's going to run. And then also let's make sure to write a query to add data. So once again, a resource query and let's call this add sales row Postgres SQL. And now to add a sales row, well, essentially we are going to have to, so I already have pre-written this for us. So I'm just going to show you this. This is how we would do this. So here we go. We are essentially just copying how we did it when we inserted sales rows into here. So sales order like so. We have simply copied this. And instead of inputting the hard-coded data, we are using data from our model. So let's just double check this is all right as something seems to not be liking this. The order ID, well, that is text input one value. So let's change that. The 
customer ID that is going to be text input to. So let's change that text input to just like so. The employee ID is going to be text input three. Text input three. The order date is date time two. So let's change that, which makes this date time one for the required date. The ship date, well, that is just date from what I remember, date one. And then the shipper ID, perhaps let's make this a little bit smaller. Shipper ID is text input 11. So let's change that. The freight is text input nine. The ship name is text input 10. And then the last ones is ship address. So once again, I'm just going to make this smaller so we can all see it. Ship address is text input 2. Ship city, text input six. Ship region is text input eight. Postal code is a four. And then we just have ship country. which is a five. And of course, the charge ID, which we're going to hard code as this. That's right. So let's just go ahead and delete all this. And I'm just going to put an empty string like so and save that. Okay, so there's our add sales row, which means now let's make sure that on this submit, we make the right query. So submit, I want to run the query, add sales order, PG SQL instead. And great. So let's run that. And wonderful. So cool. This is looking good. I believe that's it. I believe we have now replaced everything that we need. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please do let me know if there's anything that you would want me to add to this. I would be more than happy to do that. Uh, hopefully you've learned a lot in this and you can really take this and make things your own. One last thing that we can do is of course filter as well. So I'm actually going to show you how to do that super quick. So this time I'm actually just going to make a text input and this is how we're going to query data from the sales order. So for example, if we have this here and we can search, I'm just going to write a super simple query for this. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to click here, resource query. Let's call this search sales orders PG SQL. And in here, I'm going to do select all from sales order where and I'm going to get the text input 13. So text input 13 dot value or order ID equals, and then I'm going to get, just put pass int and pass through the text input 13. So text input 13 dot value. So this should be where it doesn't. So just put a bang there. Okay. So now I should be able to filter. Let's just save this. And that should just run every time we change the value in here. So if I just want to search by order, I can do so like that. And then it will just show me the searchable data in here. 
Now to update this in here, well, we're gonna have to change this up. So let's just switch this out to searched. Search sales orders instead. So get sales orders, search sales orders. Just like that. Okay, so now it's hooked up and I can make the table listen out to search for any order that I want. Wonderful. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if there's anything I've missed, please do let me know. This has been a long one, but I hope you've learned a lot and I can't wait to see you in some future tutorials too. Thanks so much again and I'll see you soon.